Part 2B. Mindless consumerism is the reason for the rise of chronic disease. There are three major ways this is happening. First, modern day employment is a health hazard. No, not this sort of hazard. Let me explain. If we had gotten to the point of becoming financially independent of our employers, as Keynes had predicted, we would not be living the sort of unhealthy lifestyle associated with modern day employment, which is very common today. Unfortunately, this is oftentimes what modern day employment looks like in today's world. A lot of us are sitting in a chair, often tied to a desk, and working from 8 to 5 or some variant of that. Moreover, we are commuting to and from work. In more recent times, many of us are working remotely, still sedentary, but sometimes working longer hours given the lack of a clear delineation between work life and home life. And this leads to a couple of problems. In the first place, we're getting very little exercise. Obviously, if we live this way for years or even decades on end, that's going to have a major impact on our health. Moreover, our days often feel rushed. That means for breakfast, we're often getting just a coffee or sometimes a breakfast on the go. Lunch is either eaten outside or sometimes sitting at our desks. And then many of us come home and understandably are tired after a long day's work. And the last thing we want to do is start making a healthy, nourishing meal. We really just want a little bit of time for ourselves. Finally, thanks to our modern way of living, we carry a lot of stress that impacts our sleep as well. Obviously, a healthy diet, exercise, and sleep are all fundamental pillars of healthy living. We have, unfortunately, engineered out the meaningful use of our legs for ambulation for getting around. Most of us have a garage attached to our houses, which automatically imply that we have a driveway and a road built to every single household. Now, if you go to the places around the world where people live the longest, with the lowest rates of disease, and if you ask them their secret to healthy living, a lot of them don't seem to know. And the reason they don't seem to know is that healthy living is actually already a part of their daily lives. Given the lack of paved roads, they either have to use their legs to walk or they cycle to get around. In other words, one of the things we consume mindlessly is convenience. Convenience is a great thing sometimes, but sometimes when we mindlessly engineer out exercise, we reduce our own well-being, health, and ultimately our own happiness. Also, we're changing our environment from one that is natural to an increasingly artificial environment and that has big consequences for our health. For nearly 97% of our time as a species, we lived as hunter-gatherers. As you can see, they spend all of their time outdoors and thereby get plenty of exercise and sunlight. In contrast, our environments are increasingly artificial. And since we evolved in and our bodies are best suited to living in natural environments, this has a number of profound health consequences. In fact, it is even worse than it appears because in addition to the fact that our environments are increasingly artificial, most of us spend 90% or more of our time indoors. Once again, in contrast, our ancestors spent 100% of their time outdoors. As you might imagine, spending 90% of our time indoors does wonders to our physical and mental health, and not in a good way. 
So now you can understand how these environmental changes, as a result of mindless consumerism, lead not only to the rise of chronic physical diseases like diabetes and obesity, but also mental health disorders. Finally, mindless consumption has also transformed the way we work. Of course, consumers are also workers. And because of our overconsumption, we work in a way that is different from a person who is financially independent works. Most of us have to work because we need to get food on the table for ourselves and our families. And we need to be able to meet our monthly payments. So most of us work, in other words, for money. And the product or service that we are selling is sort of a side effect. In contrast, those very few individuals in today's world who are financially independent of their employers, those individuals work because they're passionate about the product or service that they're selling, and money is instead the side effect. And this has profound implications for how we work and how we live. A person who works for money has very little peripheral vision and is focused almost exclusively on being able to make ends meet to get the money they need to put food on the table for themselves and for their families. But this has a shortcoming, which is that we tend to focus on making money even if the product or service we are selling is not good for those around us. This brings to mind a quote from Upton Sinclair, who was a journalist and an activist in the early 1900s. And what he said is that it's difficult to get a man to understand something if his salary depends on him not understanding it. So, in other words, understandably, we readily compromise our integrity when we have to in order to get the income we need to meet our daily needs. But suppose hypothetically that a significant percentage of people become suddenly financially independent of their employers. Then a profound change would take place. And this is true across many different industries, but let's just take the fast food industry as an example. Let's suppose that the typical fast food worker is suddenly financially independent of their employer. What do you think might happen? Well, as you might imagine, many of them would just quit their jobs. First of all, it's kind of a monotonous job. Just flipping burgers or doing things repetitively is not the way most of us want to spend our time. But second, a lot of these employees would find that their work is meaningless. And in fact, for many, it's even worse than meaningless in that the work they do is actively causing harm to the public. And so suddenly, many people, knowing they do not need to do this work to make ends meet, feel a sense of liberation. Suddenly, life gets so much more interesting, and they move on to doing something more meaningful for themselves. Of course, the owners of some of these fast food businesses, many of whom are financially independent, but are still kind of greedy and want more and more for themselves, would still want to sell all these processed foods that are highly addictive and tasty and highly pleasurable. But the problem for them is that they just won't have many workers available to them. And the end result is that the supply of fast food suddenly decreases significantly. Moreover, since people are financially independent of their employer in this scenario, a lot of people actually have the time to prepare a nourishing meal for themselves and their families. And so as a result, suddenly demand for fast food also decreases. So once again, in summary, we learned three major ways that mindless consumerism is adversely affecting our health. In part three, we'll discuss the solution for this. One so simple and yet so compelling.